Welcome everybody, this is Denny with Why Is This True, and joining me today is Carl Mollison, and we're going to continue with our channeling series, and today uh, Carl's going to channel Marilyn Monroe, and uh, if, you, if you don't know who this person is, please check the description uh, for this video, and there's a short bio there, and I also invite you to, to do a search on her name on YouTube, there's some excellent documentaries about her, her life and her death. Um, so, um, and her, her death is very controversial. And uh, and she was a very um, she played a, a very significant role in um, the early days, the end of the fifties, beginning of the sixties during the Kennedy administration, and so she was a pivotal figure in the entertainment world and also in politics, uh, oddly enough. So um, uh, we have eight questions today, and I'm going to invite Carl to uh, discuss what we're going to be doing here, and if, in case you haven't seen any of our other videos. And, uh, and I want to thank Carl. Yeah, thank you, Carl, for joining me again. I really appreciate you doing this with me. Thank you, Denny. I'm delighted to be here, as always, to help with your quest to find truth about many things of importance for the world and for society and our understanding and growth. This is what I'm after and the work I do. I help people with their issues. And Issues can be very, very local and specific to an individual, and they can spread outward to family groups and then the community and beyond to the nation state and global. And it turns out we're all in this together and we're all interconnected. And what one, what hurts one can spread and send some darkness to many, many others. There is value in finding out truth about things, especially when it's pointing you towards something very, very sinister that influences humanity as a whole. And unfortunately, we have those issues going on right here, right now. So we have an interest, uh, you and I, in seeing how Marilyn Monroe might be involved in some of these things. The signs are there on the surface, and we do have an ability to talk with her. This is one of the things that I do as a channeler, in addition to channeling divine beings and the higher selves of individuals in the living, <clears throat> I can also channel light beings. I can channel discarnated entities who are 
trapped in between planes as well. This is a fate that befalls fully one out of three people. They don't fully transition to the light immediately. They need help. And this is because we're roughed up here as human beings. We're not living anything close to an ideal existence. We're sort of getting by. We're very closed off. We're disconnected largely from the divine realm. And that's why so many struggle with faith, because you, you have to have faith because <clears throat> there's very little evidence within your own perceptions. So talking to beings in the light can help bring clarity to the issues about their time in the physical, because they can speak to it themselves, who they were, what they were doing, and why, in a way that we might speculate on looking at the evidence in historical records and, and appearances and interviews and so on, whatever might be available. But there's something special about going to the source because people still exist. They continue on. And that's one of the really nice things about this. Even though we're dealing with dark subject matter, the reality is we have an immortal soul. It is true. And when we leave here, we go somewhere else. It's good to know you can go somewhere that is wonderful and magnificent. And that's what we should aspire to. There are no big problems. They seem big to us. But when you're immortal, any individual life only has so much significance, only so much influence. Everything counts because the good and bad we do continues forward as an energy and comes back and interacts with us in various ways. So we plant a lot of seeds while we're here. We do it through our families and our children and friends and coworkers. We're contributing to others. That helps their lives and in turn is a collective work of ours. You know, you look at the greats, you know, Da Vinci and and Picasso, and the great authors and thinkers, you know, the Einsteins and the great philosophers and their legacy. Well, we have a legacy, too. Everything we do affects the future as well as, to some extent, the past, because everything is swirling around as energy. So the light beings have a legacy, and they have a future also. And they have a stake in things. So it's not unimportant. They're not so concerned about what happened personally. They don't care about their misfortunes necessarily in, in the same way we think we might. And that's because we're here feeling pain. We're here very much aware of our hard times and failures and unfulfilled dreams and, and so on. They had their innings, but now they're back in bliss and a place of tremendous potential. It's so unlike here. We're supposed to have that down here in the physical, and we don't. That's our quandary. So that's what we're working on. That's the human project. So when I reach out with channeling, one thing that's very important is to do it authentically because there are pitfalls, many, many pitfalls in doing channeling. Any kind of intuitive outreach will bump into countless energies wanting to piggyback on that, wanting to interact and step in, elbow their way in if they can. So there needs to be safeguards. I do all my channeling work through Creator of all that is. I go to Creator and ask Creator to connect me with the consciousness of the target and to put protection and safety around the work to prevent outside listening and interference. Very, very important. <clears throat> Most channelers don't bother with that. And they're very naive because they're gonna end up talking to an interloper. It's almost guaranteed when you do that because the divine realm has to let that happen. It's just like with people. If you decide to open your door 
at two in the morning and see who's passing by or call out to someone. If someone answers and said, oh, yeah, I'm that person or I'm, you know, I'm an authority on what you're seeking and you start talking to them, no one will stop it, including God. This is what happens all the time. So most channelers are really being fooled by imposters. And it, it doesn't give me pleasure to say that. No one wants to hear that. But it's a huge liability because so many are being misdirected. The, all the people they follow. It, it, it's very, very sad. <clears throat> so we're basically getting minding. You know, it's like we have babysitters, these <laughs> imposters who come and keep us dealing with simple things, simple ideas, simple concepts, and never question anything very deeply. And never talking about the big picture, never talking about government and the question of extraterrestrial beings causing problems for humanity. It's always, oh, it's wonderful, they're here to help, and these sort of messages. And it's all propaganda. So we're here on a fact-finding, truth-seeking mission. The beings in the light will only tell us certain things. There's a lot of rules. We're, in a way, cheating doing this. Because the test of us is what we do in our land of disconnection and how we make it work still and find a way back. So the cheating is allowed because we're innovating it, we're seeking it, we're requesting it. We're allowed to make requests of the divine <clears throat> in any light being. That's okay. The light beings, though, cannot solve the problem for us. They can't tell you, well, here's all the people running the hidden cabal, and here's where they hang out, and you know, here's where you need to go to round them up, and, you know, they can't do that. So, and they, and they will not blow the whistle on people in ways that will get them in legal trouble, for instance, because we don't know how to do that in the highest and best way. So when we really punish a wrongdoer, we're creating a karmic debt for ourselves because there are more enlightened ways. So, so that's just one, one for instance. So they will only share so many things, and they don't want to add to our burdens either. So they're more likely to clear up a falsehood or a source of fear for us than introduce new fears. Right. And they can't jump way ahead of us in terms of what we know and don't know. So we'll typically get a little bit of further knowledge and information. Yeah. It's been really interesting to see over this course of uh, channeling series we've done how that's worked. And it's not, it's not very obvious, but if you paid attention to like the first ones we did back, you know, was it in f February? I think we did uh, Eisenhower, the Secret Service agent, and Forrestal, you know, that what came through in those and what's coming through now, there is qu quite a difference, but it's been very incremental, you know, in that progression going along. And it's just because we've been able to integrate, um, and this is especially true for me, integrate what they're, you know, how they, how they like to deal with us in terms of the questions, the answers, and it's helped me to refine the kind of questions that I ask, the kind of questions I ask now aren't very similar to the ones that I asked, um, you know, when we first started out, just because, you know, I'm starting to get an idea of what, what their focus is, you know, where, you know, what, what they want to convey to us, you know, and, and, the, and some questions don't elicit much of a response because it's not germane to, to the help that we need, you know? Yes. Well, we, we're growing ourselves personally with our knowledge and our insight and our wisdom and that matters because we can learn more if we approach the light beings from a higher state of preparation and awareness someone who knows nothing about spirits and extraterrestrials won't be told if they have some way of connecting to a divine level.
that's not what they'll be told about. They'll be given some help, <clears throat> mostly about dealing with their emotional problems and trauma and their living circumstances and so on, their environment. Yeah. But it won't be explained to them. And you won't hear all the darker details because they're not ready. And they're not asking to know about that. You get what you ask for. Right. They won't in unilaterally. Yeah, the, the respect of the free will aspect is, is very helpful. Like if you, if you just think about um, a being, a light being, respecting humans' free will, the free will aspect, and how that, um, how that, cre that actual principle creates so many of the rules that they have to agree to in their communications with you. You know, at every turn, they're going to respect the human's free will. Um, and that's a really good example you gave there. Um, they're, they're not going to step on your beliefs like you've pointed out in the past, the, uh, the skeptics. You know, they're not going to tread on that ground. If, you, if you're uh, a skeptic, then that's a choice you've made beforehand. And they're not going to interfere with that. Yeah, they can't. You see, they're not allowed to, to interfere with your decision to be a non-believer. The, you know, they're, they're willing to let you have your experience totally, right. even if it's misguided, if in a, even if it's personally harmful, even if, even if it's potentially fatal to your survival, they can't go in and save you that way directly. You, you're on your own. You have to find your own path, your own answers, your own solutions. Now, you can ask them, you know, if you pose the question, what is my biggest threat right now? And what can I do about it? Then they might be able to let you in further as to what's happening. But if you don't ask that question, they're not going to come in and dump that on you. Right. Because that's going to interfere with you and your choices. It's going to, you know, change your thinking radically. And especially coming from on high, you know, as people would take it, it has more power than just talking to you and me, Mike, with, with a person. So they're very mindful of that. Right. And one aspect I know that happens with these interchanges, creator is present as well. And creator will step in if the light being needs correction as to what can be shared or not. And it probably is pre-vetted through Creator. So even though it's what they want to say and what they're choosing to say first, Creator may override that and have them modify it a bit before it comes out in the channeled spoken words. So you're, you're privy to that dynamic during the channeling process. Is that true? I am not privy. I only know the words that come through from my mouth because they... They float up through my subconscious, okay. much like a thought. Okay. I don't know at the time what's going on behind the scenes. Okay. But I have been told that this is one of the things that happens. Okay. Because I was asking about the whys and wherefores and what's said and what's not and what are the factors involved. And it was explained to me that you're not going to have loose cannons just, you know, tipping the hand, you know, and showing all the, you know, all the cards. It's not going to happen because creator won't allow it. Creator has a lot of rules about them interacting with us. And that's the reason, because this is supposed to be a do-it-yourself world. And that's the test. Can we survive? Can we prevail? Coming from behind as we are. That's why the benevolent ETs aren't going to swoop in and save us. Because then that just ends the experiment for us. Right. You know, it's fine if a more advanced being can handle this. The question is, can we handle it? You know, it's like someone coming in and giving you all the answers on the, the uh, SAT exam, you know, to save you. you know? <laughs> well, that's theoretically possible that, to occur. But what does it prove and what does it do for the prospective student? Then the test has no meaning. Right. It's not about them any longer. It's about the other stand-in. 
So that's why, you know, people, you know, we, we tend to think, you know, okay, we got a light being, here's our chance. We'll find out all the big secrets. And that won't happen. You only get what you're ready to hear, what's allowable to share with you. Right. And what is, what is in proportion to your level of preparation right. to be ready for that information? Right. And then, so taking that into consideration, it's, it's known that this is, this is public. This, this, it's known that this recording that we're doing right now is public. So that's part yes. of the equation. It's not just Carl and me sitting here having a discussion or you know doing a channeling session. This is for the purposes of, of you know wide, widely broadcasting out there on in YouTube land. Okay, so with that, um, I'd like to go ahead and get started. I have eight questions for Marilyn, and uh, my understanding is that you have already done a spirit rescue with Marilyn, and that happened uh, some time ago. But there hasn't been any subsequent uh, communications between you and Marilyn with Marilyn um, as a light being. Is that correct? That's right. Okay. She um, she was a person who it was brought to my attention. In fact, was struggling. You know, I have a lot of ways to spend my time and and can't do all the things that I want to do as it is. And someone actually came as a client and hired me to do a spirit rescue for Marilyn Monroe. Oh, okay. And first I thought, okay, well, this might be someone who's unbalanced, you know, maybe has some fixation and, you know, it might be a fantasy or something. You know, it happens, right? I mean, I deal with all sorts of people. And, but it turns out that most of the time, even the people who are strange and the average person would say they're unbalanced and so on, have a lot of correct intuitive perception. And that was certainly the case with this person. I mean, he doesn't fall in that extreme category. It's just the question seemed odd at the time. Mm-hmm. This is an okay sort of person, but, but uh, you know, out of the blue. Um, and I checked, and she wasn't in the light, lo and behold. So I did a spirit rescue for her. And it was really, really cool uh, to, to, to see that and to be in connection with her energy. And she was in a state of torment at the time. She was suffering. She was struggling. It's not fun being earthbound. There's a lot of continuation of emotional difficulty, and people are trapped without their normal senses, and all they have is their fears and their worries. And they can just turn that over and over in their mind for years, and they can be set upon by dark spirits and so on. So it's not pretty. Anyway, so I did the rescue, and she's on my list to go back and and talk with again, and uh, you know, give me some feedback about what was going on more in more detail, and and also how things are now for her, and her plans, and and things about her life that that I've been interested in, and so we'll get at some of those things here today. Right. Okay. But it, this is a common fate. I'm telling you, it's a common fate. I've talked to many celebrities, and it's because occasionally my guidance will point that out to me. I'll be watching something on TV or whatever, and suddenly I have this thought. You know, I wonder if they're in the light, you know, and I'll go and check, and they're not. So I'm getting a little bit of a, a tip-off sometimes about some of these folks. But people you would never believe in a million years, yeah, needed rescuing, right? Right. So, and, then, it's, and we it's finally a, discovered a positive use for television. Yes, it's, <laughs> it's, it's a mass communication. <laughs> Keeps you know, many people. I mean, Marilyn had been gone for I think fifty-two years or something before I did the rescue on her. And she was trapped that entire time. Yeah. She never made it to the light. Yeah. She's there now. So, hallelujah. (laughs) Yeah, hallelujah. Yeah, we've had some other ones uh, related in this series where some of the spirit rescues were done, where we're talking um, long periods of time where they were earthbound. It's kind of shocking, really, when you hear about it, when you think about it. Yes. Well, and actually, let me correct one thing. I did talk to her subsequently in the light. Oh. Yeah. 
I did talk to her because I wanted to get some feedback about the uh, the spirit rescue experience. Oh, okay. I did, I did I did talk to her again in the light, not not at length, but to I, there's a certain set set of questions that I've been asking some of these beings to get feedback about the process. Mm-hmm. So I did do that. Okay. Yeah, because I I remember her energy. I was thinking about how wonderful it was. And, you know, then she told me that she was beaming her love to me. And boy, was she. Woo! She, she was, she, she really w- went out of her way to create that experience, you know, which was really cool, really wonderful. Yeah. So she's doing fine now. Okay. So we'll see what she can tell us. Okay. Great. Thank you, Carl. All right. Shall I go ahead and get started? Yeah, let's go. All right, so just give me a minute to get into the right state of consciousness to make the connection, and then she'll announce when she's here. Okay. This is Marilyn Monroe speaking. Hello, Marilyn. Thank you for joining us. What were the circumstances of your death, and what happened to you after you passed? Can you describe what it was like as an earthbound spirit and your subsequent spirit rescue? My passing was very, very troubled. And the reason for that was I was in a terrible frame of mind because I had been threatened at length about my knowledge of high-level political figures and the relationships that took place that were at risk of being revealed publicly, or so they thought. And so I was threatened at length, threatened with the revelation of my background and my involvement with the political figures involved here in a personal setting and that this would once and for all make me the most vile and evil female. And this was extremely disturbing for me. What I did not see coming was my death at their hands. They arranged my demise. They did not like the answers to my, to the questions asked of me about what might happen in the future. And I foolishly replied through ego thinking that I could be on top of my own story and therefore my own fate. After all, it was I who held the cards I thought because I had the goods in the sense of personal doings of these men in ways that would compromise them and not so much myself. They explained to me that this would backfire and that I would be reviled having tainted the lofty image of the first family, in fact. And this I rebuffed and that was my undoing, seeing I was potentially unmanageable and that I might make a rash step to be self-serving in some way and let the story come forward, they decided to end things once and for all to silence me. And having just been threatened in this way with retribution and a campaign, in fact, to discredit me and to cast aspersions and to influence public opinion that would entirely undo my entire life's work and that they would see to this 
and had the money to enforce it and make it certain, those were my thoughts as I transitioned that my destiny was to be completely undone and that all in the world would come to hate me and regret my existence. And the pain of my passing only grew. I was in a state of separation like none other. It is like being buried alive, except you cannot even sense that directly because all there is is your own thought. There is no sight, no hearing, no sense of touch, no sense of having a place of existence. It is a deep, deep depth of nothingness that is oppressive because there is not the spark of life on display, not the merest hint of anything being in existence. And in the middle of that nothingness was my thought stream replaying over and over the tormenting that had taken place and my growing inner fear about its possibly coming true. This is how I spent the many decades until I was saved by your channel coming to check on me and then bringing some healing to me to raise me up enough that I could see the light caller who came as the first of many to greet me and take me the rest of the way to the light, to be back in among my friends and long-term family. We all have a vast family, much greater in size than we know when we are in the earth environment with a very small group of people. And this is because we do last a long time and we are always moving forward and having many, many new experiences coming back again and again with many of our friends and family, but also broadening our experience base and including newcomers as well. This was my fate because of my being naive and the torment I was having in my life at that time was imposed on me by manipulation coming from outside myself. I had the reputation of being emotionally unstable, being unruly, being impossible to work with because of my emotional fragility. This was on display for all to see. What is not on display is the reasons why. It was a combination of negative influences from outside myself that made me unstable. And this inner struggle is what caused me to attempt to break away from the manipulation at the very worst time, rather than just agree with those who came to check on me and promise to be a good girl. I stood up to them and because of my ego did not want to see them win. And that was 
my true undoing. But I was putty in their hands in many ways for quite a long period of time. Much of my adult life was governed by the manipulation of others. Being back in the light now, I am free from all of it. And I can tell you that I would never wish that life on anyone. It was a life of inauthenticity and great despair. And that was a combination of my upbringing as well as the powers that served to redirect me for dark purposes. Thank you. Was the testimony from the ambulance driver, James Hall, regarding Dr. Ralph Greenson and your murder correct? It is entirely correct. This was a sinister event from beginning to end. It was entirely done with the intention to kill me, to silence me, and then cover up the crime. And so those clues that people have brought forward have shined light on the truth of things. And this is a good thing because the evil needs to end and people need to wake up and see that very little that takes place in the public arena is what it seems. Most things are manufactured or manipulated into existence so they can be totally under control of the hidden hand, the true world government that seeks to oppress humanity. And I was one small player on the world stage. And it was a very, very traumatic experience for me. So I am indebted to those who are astute enough to see things were not as they were reported and have the courage to come forward and tell their story of what they observed. So you can look to these individuals and their history for further clues here. We do not want to be a divine whistleblower in that degree to name names and add more negativity in the trail of events. What took place is bad enough, and I do not wish to compound it further by creating more consternation, more finger pointing, more vigilantism, or even legal action as this will not be handled well and will likely be thwarted in the end as most legal endeavors are if they go against the powers that be. So this is much like inviting people to butt their heads against a wall. It is easy to do from on high, so to speak, but I am sympathetic to the person whose head would be hitting the wall and do not wish to add more pain to the world. My pain has come and gone and I am in a place of joy now and I do not regret my passing. After all, my career was on a downward arc at that point in any event and with the troubled relationships coming again and again and not being emotionally able to sustain a long-term relationship, my future would inevitably have worsened and was bad enough already. 
I was not in an emotional state of readiness to have a mature love relationship of stability. And that meant my future would be one of continued suffering. So in some ways, my death was a blessing to me other than to inflict the nightmarish horror of all those years lost to me in pain and torment. That may well have happened in any event. And so in a sense, the irony here is they delivered me to your channel earlier than might have happened. And at the point I might have died in old age, alone, forgotten, and suffering even greater, I might have been lost for centuries before being rescued. It happens in the end for everyone, but there can be quite a long period of loss. So I have no desire for recrimination, for revenge, or to see anything negative come from me and my story. I do see the value in bringing forward the larger truths, the larger whys behind how these events could even happen. And that will be served in this discussion. Okay, thank you. Were you also cloned? What are the karmic consequences for someone being cloned, if that was indeed the case? I was not cloned, and that was because of my celebrity. There is much cloning done of humans, and that is done for purposes of replication to create groups of individuals that can be assigned tasks and are completely expendable. But then again, all humans are expendable to the true power. And the other advantage of the clone is their ability to be programmed entirely to serve an alien agenda and a non-human one. And that will be done without question, without reservation, without any real thought or introspection because the clones are not a true human being that results. It is a human persona and physicality built in combination with a technological inner framework, a form of advanced intelligence. And so it is a partial human in appearance and personality characteristics only. It is a soulless being and one with very limited range and knowledge base. Only what is added from the external programmers will be on board. So these are a poor semblance of a human in the final analysis because they are not beings you would welcome into your family or have a close relationship with. There would be no chemistry because you would not feel their soul essence. This is taken for granted in how people function. And this is simply because you are not truly educated. You only have surface appearance and surface information and no deep understanding of even your own human experience and what it is based on. But when people are together, they have an awareness of the soul essence of one another. And that greatly informs their feelings 
and their reactions to the other purpose when other person when you are with a clone this is entirely absent so they will only pass for human in the presence of people who are not intuitive to a significant degree or for whom the exchange is quite superficial in nature and there is no need to develop a deeper relationship because that is unlikely to happen because the being in front of you is basically an empty shell. It is a simulation and a clever simulation to be sure, but an assim a simulation nonetheless. Okay, thank you. Uh, during your life, were you made aware of the alien agenda and or the use of mind control in your dealings with the Kennedy brothers or any other high-level context that you made? This I was entirely unaware of, but in fact happened and was extreme. And this is something that people need to learn. And I am delighted to be able to talk about this with you. And the reason is because you are asking and you are desiring this knowledge. Having grown your own awareness to a point where you can entertain these questions, that is the key to the lock. So we will reward you. We were listening to the discussion prior to the channeling and very much appreciate the dilemma of the state of disconnection that hinders you and all humans. So we are very, very delighted to be able to bridge some of these gaps. So the issue of mind control and manipulation is extremely serious. It affects almost every human being on the planet to varying degrees, but always significantly. It keeps people constrained so they will not seek certain types of information. They are programmed to turn away in disgust or in alarm whatever will demotivate the person to pursue a line of thought is implanted within them. Many concepts are programmed to be immediately disregarded. And this is how secrets are kept. If someone wants to be a whistleblower about the extraterrestrial presence and everyone has been programmed to automatically assign that to the category of disinformation, misguided interpretation of conventional phenomena, a hoax to end up making a believer embarrassed by their gullibility or that the person is fooling themselves or worse delusional. And if you believe their story, you are signing on to the evidence from a crazy person. What else would you do but turn the channel or hang up the phone? or turn the page of your magazine and disregard entirely whatever that person has to tell you. This is how the secrets are kept. They're not allowed to be in your thoughts, and that is being governed from behind the scenes through mind control. This is done to every human being on the planet, and it is a relentless program that serves many, many needs, covering many, many topics to discourage spirituality in all true forms, 
and to encourage a pseudo spirituality in useless forms to discourage interest in extraterrestrials and to discourage any deeper programming of what governments do and do not do as well as to encourage much disinformation to create discontentment and conflict at multiple levels to pit groups against one another this serves the extraterrestrial agenda to have humans busy fighting one another when they are doing that their energies are pre-assigned and preoccupied with human targets and not extraterrestrial ones the figurements the figures in government themselves are pawns in the game the people in politics are groomed prior to running for office by the extraterrestrials to program them and then subject them to various tests to assess their handiwork the politicians who are compliant <clears throat> and who will follow their inner programming without question without any insight that they are being shaped at the level of their own thoughts and beliefs by an outside agent are perfect politicians from the perspective of the outside force they are supported in running for office they have many induced to come forward to contribute large funds to support their campaigns and their election then is no surprise it is arranged those individuals continue to be controlled from behind the scenes even on a national level even national leaders fall in this category all are being manipulated at a minimum some are replaced entirely with an impostor if there is something particularly dark that is desired and this would include all of the warfare and other clandestine activities to cause much chaos with strained international relations and to favor certain types of market forces that bring riches to the cabal to keep things going off of the capital generated by human work you are all a slave species you have the semblance of freedom but that is only an illusion everyone is playing a role and shakespeare knew this intuitively with his immortal worlds about immortal words about all the world being a stage and all the men merely players this is literally true it is a question only of degree the balance of those not in true power are still manipulated to follow the leaders and to follow the leaders most in harmony with their inner sympathies so those of a more liberal or progressive leaning will respond to the programming favoring that leadership those more reserved and conservative in their inner leaning will rally to the more conservative of politicians both serve the cabal there is neither party in the US nor the multiple parties of governments around the world who are truly independent there are independent souls who step forward and can gain a following but they are usually eliminated along the way 
this is how the powers that be want things to happen. The drama it creates serves them as well. It gets the juices flowing. It keeps people preoccupied with a seeming reality, with the truth being it matters not who is in power and who has the official reins. They will still be controlled. It may be the case that one party in power does some things along their promised agenda other parties would not. That is the semblance of freedom in action, but not true freedom. In reality, neither party accomplishes very much in their sojourn. That is the way it is designed to be a system of interlocking gears, a kind of universal gridlock that keeps human progress at bay. So, my relationship with the Kennedys as well was mind controlled. It was no accident that a famous Hollywood temptress ended up in the bedroom with these gentlemen. What were they thinking? The world wondered when some details surfaced about the various behind the scenes liaisons. The reality was they were not thinking. They were doing what they were programmed to do. The use of sexual attraction is a frequent lever to carry people forward and give them an added incentive to carry out a mind control delivered instruction. It gives them some reason to carry out the action, even though it is not truly in their best interest. This is the reason for almost all such reckless behavior by individuals. It is to create an inner state of conflict for them on a personal level and potentially a professional level as well. It is a favorite tool to have information to compromise a powerful figure with risk of disclosure being the club threatened with, with threats to be unleashed as an inducement to manipulate them at appropriate moments. That was the purpose here. It was an elaborate scheme to tire these figures with tawdriness and with the taint of going against their vows and even their professed religion in engaging in a clandestine sexual liaison with a prominent temptress, no less, as I would be viewed by the public. That, to be sure, was my screen persona and was deliberately cultivated because it was marketable. I did have an insatiable need and desire to be loved that too was used to manipulate me again and again and again. That was my motivation in engaging with all of the men I became involved with. It was at its base, a genuine desire for love. Everyone needs love. And when I looked high and low and could not find it, the yearning grew to be almost an obsession and it was because I had so much sorrow within me and so many past difficulties, not only in my youth, but in prior lifetimes as well, that were adding to the agony in many 
instances. So as I engaged with well-known people and ended up in bed, that was engineered. It was orchestrated through mind control manipulation from both ends. And that is the reason for this high risk escapade that was so titillating in the tabloids. After the assassinations, it was largely a moot point. But at the time, at the zenith of their power, the full revelation of all that was going on would certainly be highly damaging and a major distraction. And there were political risks. And this was the point. It was a lever to work against the Kennedys to rein them in and to cause them trouble. They were quite hated by the cabal. The reason being they were straight shooters and were on a divine mission to truly help the world. You might not like their politics. That was not the point of their mission. It wasn't to serve a political party or even a left-leaning agenda versus a light right-leaning agenda. It was to save humanity from the extraterrestrial agenda. That was their true purpose and their sole mission. And the reason they ascended to power, it was not supposed to happen. And if the cabal had anything to say about it, which they did and always do, they would never have been successful, but had divine help. And that is what pushed them over the top and enabled the ascendance politically. It was only through divine intervention that President Kennedy won office. So there are many who enter the political arena with a divine agenda and a soul mission. Most fall by the wayside through corruption. This is how the hidden power deals with such individuals. They find a way to weaken them or to simply constrain them in such a way they are powerless in the end, even though they might be a senator they cannot get a spot on key committees, for example, and remain a minor player. There are many ways to hold people back. And there's nothing like a timely scandal around an election year to completely change a person's destiny and have them fall from favor. So, there are, are multiple levels of manipulation, and that was the reason for our relationship taking place to begin with. It was not just animal attraction and kind of a reckless playboy mentality, a boys will be boys indulgence from powerful figures who felt deserving because of their high position, the many personal sacrifices and the weight of the world on their shoulders and so forth. It was entirely manipulated. And this is routine. What you're seeing now with the revelations coming forward about sexual conduct is an extension of what we are seeing and the tip of an iceberg. Okay, thank you. Were you subjected to satanic ritual abuse? This happened to me as a child. And this was the sad history that shaped me and changed my personality 
in a way to be willing to fall into place and needing someone to take control of me. This was my upbringing in my very early years. And this kept me in a fragmented state and a state of tremendous neediness and helplessness at times as well. And this was the reason I could generate an opposite seeming persona so readily as an actress, but yet behind the scenes would crumble and would dissemble and become helpless once again to the extent I might not even be able to function. This was inexplicable to those around me, but this was an end consequence of the severe trauma to which I was subjected, and it left me in a dissociated state and to cultivate aspects of my personality to bear the weight of that trauma and still survive, the fragmentation served me to that end. It happened at the cost of the integrity of my being as a functioning whole and was always lurking in the background and would pop up at just the wrong time. This was also orchestrated and used in the manipulation of me to work against me because these aspects of my being could be summoned by the outside operatives who manipulated me and was not under my ability to control. They could create the charming public persona the movie star image in control and able to manipulate those around me with my looks and my charm and then in a flash reduce me to a helpless state of weeping and despair. That was the life I led, going back and forth on a frequent basis. And it was done to serve others and not myself. My personal life was an afterthought and was the way I filled in my time when I was not commandeered to do other things. I had relationships with many men and many figures, almost all of which were manipulated to take place by the extraterrestrial agenda wanting to move people about like chess pieces and create experiences that could be used as weapons. So they were always accumulating dark information about everyone in prominence so they could be used as a tool in some way within Hollywood to corrupt others who wish to be around a movie star, but would get them into trouble if there were hanky-panky taking place. That is the Kennedy saga in a nutshell. But there were many other purposes to have certain screenplays come forward successfully among the many, many candidates and then become a production and be able to win financing and draw top talent and end with a story that serves the extraterrestrial agenda because the storyline 
very much fits with disinformation they wish to promote. Culture shaping stories that will move humanity away from a state of divine perfection and cheapen things. These are orchestrated from behind the scenes. It is not simply a consequence of so-called progressive thinking that you allow almost anything on screen because it is associated with the newer perspectives of tolerance, allowance, promotion of diversity, sexual liberation, freedom on a personal level that is near total, where drug taking and so on are esteemed qualities and virtues even, and just an interesting aspect of a character all of which creates an impression in the young particularly of its acceptability. And so we are not being prudish here. We are simply referring to the fact everything has consequences. And the fact that these icons accepting and in effect promoting these behaviors through their example are doing so because the extraterrestrials want that out in front of all the eyeballs. They want us to emulate people with self-destructive habits. They want to drag down humanity. And this is why you have an endless series of motion pictures about criminals carrying out crimes. What is that supposed to teach? Is it supposed to teach you to obey the law? Or is it supposed to teach you the life of a criminal can be quite exciting? It teaches many things that are destructive in the end. This is all manipulation. So the use of sexual surrogates and representatives to seduce and charm and distract and engage and compromise people in positions of power across the board serves the cabal and serves them mightily for many, many reasons and many, many agendas. Okay, thank you. Did you have previous incarnation karmic ties to John and or Robert Kennedy? And if so, can you explain? This is not the case. We were not members of a soul group, a soul collective. This was strictly a confluence of lifetimes for strategic purposes orchestrated by the cabal in bringing us together. So this is the wild card in life. Left alone, humans find their way to one another, often with divine help, often through their own inner radar, recognizing someone in a crowded room as being someone they know, may be a soul recognition from past lifetimes together in some capacity. This is how people find their true soulmates and those whom they are planning to seek out and join up with in a particular incarnation. When the manipulation of humans commences from external interlopers coming in and wanting to change the world, all bets are off and people can be programmed and instilled with love feelings of tremendous intensity right from the start, much as you would throw a switch and then things would happen as a consequence all at once. 
this is not real. It is manipulated. It is engineered. But it happens again and again and again. And that was the sole reason for my interaction with them. And you can see this as well in what happened. There was never a plan for a deeper interconnection or a lifelong relationship with any other agenda other than spending delightful moments for having a tryst on occasion and nothing more. This was not desired on, on a deep level except to create the fantasy within. So this was imparted to me, but from the male side of things, it was never their dream to marry Marilyn Monroe. The attraction was a combination of chemistry and mind manipulation only. The extraterrestrials do this with people all the time. And it's because they want certain people to breed and create a fetus for experimentation. And they happen to have genetic compositions of interest to create a combination in offspring. And they'll bring those people together in the night through abduction. And never having met before, on sight of one another will be in a state of rapture and a state of growing sexual excitement that is uncontrollable, whether they are married at the time or not, will not matter. They will want to have a sexual union and it will take place on the spot under the strangest of circumstances plucked from their bed in the middle of the night by extraterrestrial alien beings and in a strange environment with all of the doubt and uncertainty and fear that would induce in a normal person without such manipulation, sex would be the last thing on one's mind under those circumstances. But yet this is routine. This is the power they hold to manipulate human emotion. That's what we're talking about here. And that is all that was taking place. It was entirely an orchestration. And of course, we were human beings and responded to the humanness in one another. And there were heartfelt exchanges of feelings and moments of connection. Because after all, we were soul-based beings and involved in quite unusual circumstances. So this was not cold and mechanical, but that is only adding reality trappings to a staged exercise and serves the agenda at hand. So we were not left wondering what happened because it made no sense whatsoever. In retrospect, it did seem to make sense because we did have that human connection and that human bond that took place and then would grow with prior, with with subsequent meetings. So we viewed it as a normal event. An outsider would might, would likely see it as crazy behavior under the circumstances. So this is not what you would expect to see the most powerful man in the world doing with his free time with a loving wife and children and belonging to a Catholic family. Yet it happened. So what we would point out is that he had no choice. This was not his personal failing. This was engineered to take place.
beyond his ability to control it. This is what you're dealing with when you deal with any authority in your day-to-day life. You will never know who has the real say, who put the rules in place, and why. It is never who you think running things. Everyone is manipulated and orchestrated to some degree through their programming. And even the so-called natural means of gaining knowledge are unnatural because they're built on a legacy historically of manipulation. So all of the history you study is the history designed and orchestrated and implemented through alien control. All of the wars you learn about and the great conquerors and the historical events that moved nations and changed the face of the world in dramatic ways, those were all a consequence of extraterrestrial manipulation to some degree or another. So the very ideas you hold about government getting along in society, what it means to be a citizen, all of those things are things allowed to take place and are built on old models coming from the way extraterrestrials have allowed things to go in the past. And this is why today you still have the monarchies alongside constitutional type governmental bodies where you have a parliament as well for functional reasons for window dressing. But that is all it is. It's a make work exercise to give the simulation people hold true power. There are many, many countries ruled by despots and strong men who are totally serving the cabal. We see them as self-serving, and in a sense, that is true. But the ones calling the tunes are hidden behind the scenes. They are simply allowed to be in the forefront, keeping up the game. This is the way the world truly works. Okay, thank you. This will be the last question. Did you reincarnate after your death, and is that person still living? I have not as yet reincarnated. So this has not happened so far. This is possible in the future, and my desire at the present time as a light being is to further contribute to the cause of humanity. And this is what each and every one of you are doing. You are there because you chose to come down and enter the fray, knowing full well what you were taking on and what you were risking personally. Those who have been at this for long periods of time, which by now includes most current humans, have a long history of suffering at the hands of these outside manipulators, the dark spirit corruptors, and the extraterrestrials they in turn corrupted as they are doing to humans, and have darkened to the point where they would drag humanity down entirely. So this legacy continues. You came down knowing you were jumping into a cesspool and would be facing the greatest threat to human survival in its history and taking that on directly. You may or may not have reached a point where you are on the true precipice, the 
battlefront, if you will. It is more like a tug of war, but many are killed nonetheless. When human wars are started to undermine things, many perish. Many are hurt and wounded for their life and multiple subsequent lives by the soul wounds they incur. Being a part of such carnage, being corrupted and dragged down, will take a toll on them karmically. So all of us have a huge karmic legacy that needs to be healed once and for all. Yet when we come down and incarnate, we're as apt to add more to that dark legacy than to do healing. This needs to change. And that is why we are supporting your channeling efforts here. Many channelers who reach out to us, we do not answer because they are not capable of dealing with the information or seeking something truly highest and best. They are seeking a very human level experience and aspect of knowledge and maybe serving a personal agenda for reasons of ego, for instance, and we will not indulge this. And then they fall into the hands of the extraterrestrials and their psychics will happily talk to all channelers and all meditators who want to reach out to the beyond and have some experience. They'll be given an experience. The price of admission is only showing up. That's not so with the divine realm. We will not indulge people's whims or add to their personal folly. There must be a genuineness of purpose, a sincerity, a true heart-based, love-based outreach, and with 100% belief. That is a tough standard to meet. And they must, in addition, feel worthy themselves. This is the major reason others may fall short. They still doubt themselves and doubt their own worth. Their karmic woundings are still so great. They have difficulty being at a divine level. It is not their fault, not their failing. It is simply a consequence of so much life experience. This is what you take on when you come down and you are in this with a serious purpose. So we want to help and we are happy we can do so here and now as this is very, very unusual and mostly does not take place. It is a very, very rare event. So we hope we've given you some insight about what is truly happening. And this is true of many public figures as well. When you see the stories in the news unfold, think about what put people into this position to stray, to risk the esteem of millions in some cases, as well as multi-million dollar annual salaries, to risk that by grabbing a woman's breast and making a lewd comment is nonsensical. These things do not happen because of weakness of character. They are a corruption imposed by outside forces. It is a risk for everyone, and it is a function of the need for healing across the board. 
You can choose to be a part of this. You chose that in coming down. Each one of you is adding your light and your divine energy to the cause of humanity. You can do more by keeping that flame alive through a conscious choice to line up with the divine. And you must state this and request it explicitly. You must ask for divine help for you and others. That is not hard to do and costs you nothing. Your vote is needed. Your active participation with such requests. Give the divine realm the standing to come in on your behalf. Otherwise, all of us are on the sidelines watching you make your way as best you can. That is a prescription for failure right now because you are up against superior foes. It's just that simple. You have the potential to far outreach them and extend beyond them in magnificent ways. But you are not fully empowered. You are limited right now in your reach. You chose to come. You chose to serve. So make it count. Okay, thank you so much for joining us. Joining us, And with that, I would like Carl to ask Carl to come back. Well, that held a few surprises, I think. It's surprising to me. I was not expecting the mind control stuff. I had an inkling about it. Mm -hmm. And that is what allowed this to come out. It was our inklings. And that's an example of what you need. So I've talked to Marilyn before, and she didn't come up and say, oh, by the way, you know, all that stuff, all that shenanigans was all mind control manipulation. They were trying to compromise the powerful people. And there was another agenda there. She didn't offer that. They won't do that. They cannot do that. Right. But if you think to ask, they may reveal the truth to you. So this is kind of an example of growing into the awareness needed to be on that level. Right. You know, it's like it's sort of like uh, with children. You don't tell them about all the darkness in the world and all the hazards. You know, I mean, you kind of give them the things they need to know. You know, don't talk to strangers and that. But you don't give them the gory details. Right. You know, you don't warn them about teacher pedophiles and stuff. I mean, most people wouldn't. Right. <laughs> you know. They watch for signs. They, they talk about, you know, their personal integrity and boundaries and stuff. And, and you know, you tell mommy if anybody touches you in a way that you don't like, you're not supposed to do that. You know, don't let anybody do something to you and makes you unhappy or whatever. You tell mommy, you know, that kind of thing. Right. You don't fill up with stories about children being abducted and never coming back. And, you know, this you know, so it's the same with the light beings. They can't do that. They can't dump that negativity on you right. until you cure. Yeah, these, this uh, manipulated sexual encounter thing is, is uh, covered quite nicely, I think, by Eve Lorgan's work. She wrote the book called Alien Love Bite. So if anybody's kind of interested in exploring that further, um, she's, she's a good source for that. She's made quite a study of it. And, uh, and it's, it, you know, it should be noted because... That's one of the major ways so many uh, people in power are controlled. It's such an easy way to do it. Um, you know, the blackmail aspect of it alone is just extraordinarily powerful, and it's it's quick, it's easy, it's a well-established, uh, you know, program that's been out there probably for thousands of years. And uh, we're sexual beings, yeah. So it's easy for them to exploit that. Right. And it's the same with love. 
Yes. The, the thing about the extraterrestrials is they are loveless beings. They do not feel love. They don't even understand love anymore. It's They're devoid of love. This is the path they've been on. They were enamored with technology. They turned away from God long, long times ago, many thousands of years ago. And they've been on a downward path ever since. And now they're effectively like sociopaths, shallow, self-serving, ego-based. It's all about power. Right. And they have no ability to feel compassion or true love. Yeah. But they know we have this thing that we call love, and it makes us go wild. <laughs> and they know how to induce it in us. Yeah, it's like their little magic trick on humans. Right. That's right. They yeah. rub us yeah. in the right spot and things yeah. happen. Well, yeah. <laughs> it, you know, it's part of our equipment. And, and, and so they just exploit it. It's just a tool for them. Right. And so they, can, they know the words. They can describe it. And they can induce it in you. So right. this is what's coming. There's going to be ETs coming out on the world stage. And you're going to love them because they're manipulating you to feel like they're loving you. It's a trick. It's all a trick. Yeah. I just had a client recently who was interested in uh, in my services to do uh, you know remote spirit releasement and a clearing and so on. And I looked for all these sort of influences. And he told me a story about being on a foreign trip. And he saw this woman across the room. She saw him. And they just like were compelled to come together like they were long lost friends, although they didn't recognize one another. And they embraced. And then they slept together. And they, it was like it just fire, this passion. And what I was shown in doing the session on the person was this was a manipulation. They had both been abducted by ETs, and they were induced to have sex for reasons to serve their program, you know, create a fetus that would be, you know, useful to study. And their their emotions were manipulated at the time. So that old programming kind of kicked in again, just on the side of that person, and just out of the blue. This is what they're able to do. So... You can't really count on the surface appearance of things to really be sure anymore. Yeah. Yeah, I suspect that probably <laughs> happened. Pardon? See, love is real. Yeah. And and love is what's really important. And it's just funny how they can turn that against us and use it to our disadvantage. It's amazing. Yeah. I, I imagine, too, that happens with a lot of the Chandlers, you know, who, um, you know, they, they try to connect with the spirit guide or some source of information or a benevolent ET, the imposter steps in, gives them all the, the intellectual, um, you know, trinkets. But in addition to that, gives them that feeling of love. And then that's kind of like the hook, you know, that's where yes. they set the, there's bait on there. They set the hook with the love. And then after that, you know, it's, it's almost impossible to, um, to alert them to the fact that that might be going on because there's such a high level of devotion that's been created through that relationship that gets reinforced with each session that they go through. And then also with that, they're able to um, help other people through that connection, you know, through the, the, you know, valuable information or some type of a loving experience that their client would get. And it just reinforces this whole, uh, uh, experience of having s this valuable, you know, intuitive connection with their benevolent ET connection or their spirit guide or however that you want to look at it. And it almost becomes this, this great castle, you know, for them, none of the walls can be scaled. You know, they're, they, they've established their little place in their world where they've got their cadre of followers and it's unassailable. It's there. They they built this fortress around this intuitive connection, this channeled material yep. or whatever, and then uh, so, and you know <laughs> that's the landscape. And I and I've heard them in action. Yeah. You know, and you know the channel will you know, will you know the channeled voice coming through will say, "There's such love here for you. 
you know, and the people, oh, you can just, you know, the people sigh in the audience, you know, they just eat it up. And it's all a lie, unfortunately. I mean, it, it's, it's, it's amazing. Yeah. But we're, we're very vulnerable because we are do-gooders. You know, we, we like to think the best right. of things and we expect the best of others until proven otherwise. And, and it's because we're good inside. Right. Plus, and, plus, as you've pointed out before, we've been disconnected from our higher self genetically and then disconnected from our subconscious, which would help us to navigate in those, those areas more effectively. Well, we don't have those tools anymore. They've been taken from us. Yes. We're like wandering around in the dark trying to find our love. Yep, that's that's a good uh, a good way to to see why this can be so. Yeah. We're living in faulty equipment, is the way I describe it. We're we're you know, our antenna is broken and our <laughs> Yeah. You know, the tires are flat. <laughs> you know, we we've got a you know, a, a hard drive that you know has a lot of the memory, but we can't get at it. Yeah. You know? So we're we're we have limited information to work with too right. about our own selves. Yes. So it, it is it, it's a struggle for everyone, and some people have no idea that they're living this way. Yeah. It's because there's no basis of comparison. Right. So, and they're, yeah, and they're like you were saying before, they're programmed to avoid the things that would actually supply them answers. Yeah. So, it, yeah. So it, at, on the solution side of the equation, uh, Carl and I have been promoting these prayers. And we recently did a um, an interview, Carl and I, where there's no channeling. We just did like a, what we called a prayer analysis. There's actually one, two, three, four, five, six prayers. And uh, I'm going to put those in the description of this video. I'm not going to recite them just for the interest of time this time around. But one thing I wanted to bring up, uh, which was which was mentioned uh, in this video and in the prayer analysis video and in some, probably some of our previous ones, was the idea of belief quotient and the effectiveness of prayer being directly tied to our own belief. So that if we have something less than 100% belief, our prayer is commensurately um, you know, ineffective, so to speak. So... I, I wanted to bring up with with you the idea of maybe asking Creator about a prayer that specifically addresses the issue of of increasing our own belief in our use with these prayers. And what do you what do you think about that? It's a good question to ask. I think the answer could be uh, complicated because there's so many ways in which people uh, develop that disconnection and the doubt, and it and it persists. But it's it's a good one to ask because I think this is something that people could cultivate and to have something to use as an instrument for that cultivation, right. I think could be very powerful. Because otherwise, you know, what do you do? And you tend to throw up your hands after a while. You know, you don't really know what to do next, so you don't do anything. Right. <laughs> yeah. And that and you that know. prayer, uh, if utilized, then would make the other prayers more powerful. Because your yes. belief quotient's going up, so each time you say the love prayer, you know, and you've ta you're saying maybe this other prayer, you know, a, a um, hypothetical prayer that increases your belief quotient, you know, then it's kind of has a building effect, you know, and it well, and, and there's there's another thing that I think Creator is is tapping me on the shoulder about, which is that things happen across time, so we're affecting the future by all we do. You know, people think of it as you're launching a potential, which is true. Everything you do puts in new capacity to do something else. And you're heading in a certain direction. And so that direction tends to expand out in front of you. But also the future loops back into the present. So this is, you know, this is too complicated discussion for the moment, but Everything is happening in the now. Everything is happening all at once. And that's why past lives are so important. They're going on concurrently. And your future is going on concurrently. And it's constantly changing as you actually change the present reality from moment to moment. It changes all of your futures from moment to moment. But those future experiences can loop back and influence your present. So by wanting to cultivate your belief 
and having that intention and going through some steps to keep requesting it, keep requesting it. Eventually, you're going to call back to you the future completion of that effort. Ah. It's hard to reinforce the effectiveness of your current requests because you're linking it up and you're matching those energies and, it, and it's going to amplify things and make it swifter right. and more certain. Right. And you will be amplifying that future certainty that it comes to be true at some point. Right. hundred percent. So just wanted to throw that in, not to yeah. scare okay. people or anything. But. Okay. So, so we are running out of time. Um, but I do want to bring up two other things before we close. One is your, the class that you're going to be conducting out on the West Coast the beginning of February 2018. It's only a month away now. And um, I'll, put the, I'll put some information about that if for people that are interested in the description of this video. Uh, we've talked about that before. And then uh, this past Sunday, I did a live stream uh, for Why Is This True? And then we announced our, uh, our collaboration with a, uh, a new venture, internet-based venture, called Get Wisdom. And so I just wanted to give you an opportunity to chime in on that, talk about that a little bit before we close. Okay, thank you. I, I'm happy to do that because one of the agendas for me personally is to spread the awareness that I've developed through lots of hard work, increment by increment, slowly, steadily chipping away at the uh, font of information that's out there potentially, but having to be ready and having to grow into it. So all that accumulated wisdom I have gained, I want to share. So I'm teaching a class in using what I call the Lightworker Healing Protocol. It's the process I use to do spirit releasement remotely, Spirit rescue of earthbound beings to get them to the light. Clearing of locations to remove all sorts of negativity, including entities. And then also working with animals to do the same processes on animals. And the same protocol largely is usable for the, all that whole spectrum of activities. And all of it is helpful to us because it resolves karmic debts and karmic dilemmas it takes care of some past life things it takes care of entity issues and extraterrestrial entanglements and things we do to one another like curses and hexes and even just dark thoughts and anger and and the legacy of being around each other and taking advantage and exploiting and all those slings and arrows they need healing every bit of it needs healing so this is the same process i use it's something anyone can do it does require belief in the divine because you're going to invoke creator to carry those things out. That's what I do. I don't heal with my own power as a healing being. We all have healing ability within us. We all have intuitive ability within us. When I do it through creator, it's better. It's more powerful. So now I do everything through creator and anyone can do this. It's your birthright. So if you believe in it and you believe you're worthy to hear from God, come on down and I'll teach you how to do this. And you don't have to be psychic. People use this process successfully without really getting any feedback because they're just not open enough intuitively. They may open up doing this process because part of what you can do is include yourself every time you use this. So you become your best tool for healing because you're constantly requesting this be done, that be done, the other thing be done, on and on and on. And every time I do the protocol, I include myself as a client. So this is a wonderful way to raise myself and others up. So you can come and join the party. It, it's, a, it's a fabulous thing. It's a tremendous value. It's a state-of-the-art process because I'm adding things uh, continually to it, and it's very advanced now. It's got some fabulous tools in it. Healing across time domains, for example. Soul matrix work that really addresses every 
possible source of negative intervention with a with a person. And across time, all of time, past, present, and future as well. And it's way it's the way the divine realm heals. So you'll learn that. You'll learn how the divine realm heals things. And you'll be able to invoke it directly. And you'll do better in doing healing work if you include that as a component. So I appeal to healers as well. Don't think you know it all. And I, and and even if you're really successful in what you do and really enjoy what you're doing, you'll pick up some extra things you can add. You know, I don't have to change what you're doing. You don't have to stop it. But you can add things here and there as you see opportunities. And you can do things behind the scenes. And it all makes you look good. You know, if you work with somebody and something happens for them, right. you're the one who's going to get the credit. Right. So, right. so there's every reason to use this resource. Right. And we do have a testimonial video that, that, um, that I put out a couple weeks ago. And so that's out and about on my channel and also on the website, why is this true? So let's give a few minutes to the Get Wisdom Project. Yes, I was just going to turn to that. Thank you, because I, I can get going and ramble. Uh, so the Get Wisdom Project is a deliberate new platform to spread the truth of the divine to a broader audience to encourage them to go back to dealing with the divine directly through prayer, simple prayer, work to make that connection and request help for humanity. We don't have to learn how to deal with powerful extraterrestrials and take them on. We just have to go back and ask Creator to solve this problem. That is the best answer for intruders who come in. So what we've been told is there needs to be enough human participation, enough humans requesting divine help. Most people have fallen away from their faith. They may call themselves religious, but less and less practice, actual practice at it. And most people don't even know there's a problem going on in the world right now that involves our suppression and subjugation. They just think, you know, it's the humans again who are causing this. So you blame it on Trump or you blame it on Putin or you don't like the European Union or there's some other. Cabal. Um, yeah, some or the, this kind of ill-defined Illuminati cabal yeah. type thing. But there is widespread suppression of humanity and we're going to have to have a divine solution now. The divine realm won't do it unless we ask. Yeah, this is the free. This is the human free will experiment. That's right. So, so being well, in the driver's seat, the Get Wisdom Project is absolutely necessary. Yes. So we intend to be a beacon to reach out and attract the fire. The the attract all of the people who are open to this kind of message to come and learn, see what's really happening. And the depth of it and the breadth of it and its deep, deep history. Because we know lots about this and we've got lots of information, facts and figures about the things going on and what's really behind it. You'll be shocked as, and amazed both. But it's better to know than not know. Because then you may make up your mind, gee, I better vote with God. I better. Yeah. So I better sign a, huge, up. a huge part of this is not just finding out what we've been revealing in these in these channeling sessions, which is going to be a part of Get Wisdom. Yes. But the solution, and that gets yep. back to the prayers. Uh, one thing I wanted to do, uh, uh, and, and I invite you to, to add to what you say, but I would like to, for everybody, I would like to read the mission statement for Get, Get Wisdom just so that they know um, that this is what I call the rudder on the ship. This is what Carl and I... And our other partner for the Get Wisdom Project look at when we say, why are we doing this? What What is the point of, of the Get Wisdom Project? So that's what this mission statement answers. And this was given uh, to Carl directly through a, a channeling session. The Get Wisdom Project is a divine manifestation 
to reawaken in the minds and hearts of humans across the planet to the reality of a divine partner, ready and willing to help their lives in many ways at all times, and bringing love to them and to all they wish to be reached by divine love, in service to human betterment. This mission requires human participation, and the goal of the enterprise to, is to cultivate and refine tools for those participants to maximize overall success and benefit to the outcome. So that's the Get Wisdom uh, mission statement. And, and you're the tool, you watching this right now, you're the tool. We can't do it. Denny and I cannot do this by ourselves. And I was very sad to learn in studying the ins and outs of prayer with Creator that we only have so much reach with a prayer. So if you want to pray for the humanity, it's going to have very, very little impact because your wattage isn't big enough to be spread that thin. So even myself in doing healing work for people, I can't heal a million people at once or 10,000 people at once or 1,000 people at once. I can only do it incrementally. I can do groups, but only in proportion to my state of development. And it's true for the average person as well. If you want things to change quick and in a big way, you don't have the power to make that happen, just wanting it, just manifesting it somehow with your thoughts. You need divine power. That is the only level of power that can go in and move the minds and hearts of four different extraterrestrial groups who are here with a jackboot on our neck. That is the reality that we are in right now. We need God's help. And so we can reach God, each of us individually, and have our request added to the whole. But you have to do it. Right. You can't just right. have a thought, oh, that sounds good. I'd like to see that happen. Then go back and, you know, start watching TV. Right. So the Get Wisdom Project is... Request. You have to say, God, I'm in. Right. Come and help right. us do this. Help all of us be raised up. Yeah. So the, so the Get Wisdom Project is, is like a portal for doing that. It's a gathering space for doing that. So you can come, and, and the big part of what we're doing there is to, spread, is to actually spread that word in, a, in an effective, incredible way that works quickly, as quickly as we can make it. So we've modeled it after other successful enterprises that have that ability to do that. So that people could come there, uh, you know, there's categories of membership and support. And if you do support the Get Wisdom Project, then a great portion of your support is going to be dedicated to getting the word out. And that means advertising, whatever other means that we can spread the word for additional membership to grow this thing so that we can get to that critical mass of humanity out there, which is what's needed in prayer to and, you know, to create an effective partnership with the divine realm to change things in a very, you know, real and positive way. So this isn't about just an uh, entertainment site or, you know, revealing more of the dark agenda or telling stories to each other. This is about creating an effective and powerful solution. That really is, that really is the goal here. It's not just, for, it's just, not, it's not another Me Too operation. This is about dealing with the causes and not, you know, the, many symptoms will be revealed because that's part of it. That's part of building the map. But, but what, really what we're talking about is a solution, you know, un uncovering and correctly identifying the causes and then applying a solution to the problem. And uh, any, anything else is fluff and it's not going to, it's not going to be good use of our time. So for p people who recognize the need for that, this is the place to go. You're here. here. So with that, Carl, hey. I want to thank you so much for, for doing this um, and, and thank to Marilyn Monroe for joining us today and, you know, filling us in on, on so many aspects of, of her experience. And uh, so Carl and I are, are doing these channeling uh, sessions once a week now. And if we can 
throw in an extra one here and there to, to help with all of this, then we'll do that. The Get Wisdom um, Internet Project is going to be officially open on January um, 18th. And I'll put the word out for the URL to get to that site uh, on January 18th. And the class is coming up in February. And the uh, and we're, Carl and I and others are going to be working to make the online online version of the Lightworkers Healing Protocol course available in March. That's our that's our target date, and we'll do our best to to meet that target. Um, but our plate is full. We have a lot a lot to do. So your prayers for uh, for us in that regard would be very much appreciated. And thank you again, Carl, for joining me. And I want to thank everybody for joining us. Have a great week. Bye bye.